Now let's talk about the scientific method. And the scientific method generally goes like this. You have an observation about something. You then form a hypothesis. You then do an experiment. And then, uh, and let's just focus on that portion of this scientific method uh, right now. Uh, my observation is that my toaster doesn't toast. It doesn't heat up. And that's a problem. <laughs> it did uh, last week. Now it doesn't. And so something's changed. And so uh, I like toast in the morning. Um, I like to put some cream cheese on it and uh, peanut butter, almond butter, lots of different things depending upon the day and my many moods. So I want to fix this. And so uh, there's a couple different hypotheses that I could have. One of them is that the toaster is broken. Another one, since it's plugged into the wall, is that the plug on the wall doesn't work. And we can think about, uh, as a hypothesis, we can think about experiments for that. But the toaster is broken. So that's my hypothesis. And then my experiment is going to be to plug the toaster into a different outlet. Um, and I do the experiments and the results of this experiment are it toasts or it works and my experiment has shown that my hypothesis was wrong And now it leads me back to my other hypothesis, my new hypothesis, is that the outlet is broken or not working, let's say. And we could have some other hypotheses based around that, some, uh, some experiments. So uh, I know that in my house, we have some outlets that have uh, test and reset buttons. So uh, that the circuit could have tripped. Uh, but what this captures is that, first off, we're doing science all the time. We're doing observations, hypothesis. We're doing the scientific method all the time. And the second thing this captures is that oftentimes when you do uh, one observation, hypothesis, experiment, it leads you to new experiments. And then the third thing I'll say about this is that good experiments, almost always you learn something, whether you, uh, your hypothesis was wrong or your hypothesis was right. So, uh, and just think about that. So oftentimes if you do a good experiment, it tells you something new whether it worked or not. And some experiments are not like that, but a lot of them are. Now, um, I've uh, grown mung beans before, mung bean sprouts, and they grow to 10 centimeters in 10 days when grown in water. And this is uh, pure water. And so my hypothesis is going to be that mung bean sprouts will grow longer if I add fertilizer to the water. And there's no soil here, I, so, uh, but my hypothesis is based on other scientists' work and those other scientists and uh, uh, newspaper articles that I've read have generally said 
that adding fertilizer, whatever this fertilizer is, will help plants grow. Um, and I know the plants grow. I've observed them just in pure water. And uh, so my experiment is going to be, uh, and in this experiment, it's going to be important to have a control group. Uh, because you'll notice that I want to see if they grow longer. And the mung beans, they may, you know, it could be different temperature, it could be different um, uh, temperature would be the big thing uh, of the water. Uh, but there are other things that we may not be able to control. And good experiments only ever change one thing. So we'll have a control group and we'll have, and the control group will be 10 uh, mung beans in pure water and then the experiment group and I'll abbreviate experiment EXPT experiment group we 10 mung beans and these are ditto marks meaning that right above it is the same thing so 10 mung beans in water with fertilizer added. And, um, and what this does, like I mentioned, uh, having a control group is maybe the temperature in the room goes from uh, 25 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius to 20, depending upon whether the heating and cooling system is on or maybe it goes on the fritz. Um, so at least you'll be able to compare, uh, you know, unless you recorded the temperature before, uh, you'll, you'll be able to do a realistic comparison. Your experiment will have meaning because you've only changed one thing between these two parts of the experiment. So good experiments. Keep everything the same and change only one thing. Keep everything the same. And only change one thing. And if you do them on different weeks, you know, you did 10 days here and 10 days later, or even 10 days, you do it, and then you think to do the experiment three months later. Humidity could change, temperature could change, lots of things could change. All right, so we've sort of covered this part pretty well. Now let's get down to more of the bottom down here. So uh, law versus theory, and for a law, a law is states what happens. always. So a law would be the law of conservation of mass. Oop, it's probably even got a capital C in there. And the law of conservation of mass uh, is typically stated as, well, so originally it was, Mass is conserved um, in any process. It has since been amended uh, or to be uh, in non-nuclear processes. Uh, in non-nuclear processes, uh, mass is conserved. So uh, mass is neither created nor destroyed. And again, that's stating what is happening. There's no why is it happening. It states what happens, and to be a law, it states what happens always. Okay, now a theory it explains why something happens.
And as an example of a theory uh, we will run into, it's called valence bond theory. And that will explain covalent bonding. And don't worry if you don't know these terms yet. We will. We just want to get the idea that once you do enough experiments, hypothesis, experiments, observations, you can get to laws and theories. Now some examples, and we're going to uh, stick to observation, hypothesis, or experiment for these. So ice floats on water. That's an example of an observation. So I'll put O after it for observation. So O, H, and E. A gas sample has a mass of 15.8 grams and a volume of 10.5 liters. That is an observation as well. You're just stating facts. So things that are occurring or that you can see, that you can measure. The pressure of a gas is increased and the volume is recorded. So recording is going to mean that there is an experiment going on. Uh, mung bean growth will be inhibited if the beans are grown in solutions of silicon oxide nanoparticles. So that is a hypothesis. And it's a hypothesis that I have tested in my undergraduate research group in the past. Uh, wearing an N95 mask will decrease your chances of getting COVID-19. That is a hypothesis. That is a hypothesis that many of us are perhaps testing while I am recording this. And one million people in Maryland start wearing N95 masks on a particular date and wear them consistently for 14 days. Each person gets COVID testing if and when they feel sick. That sounds like the beginnings of an experiment to me. So you're actually doing something and recording things, and that would be a good experiment or part of an experiment. So there's, I'm sure there's much more to that. When um, after the hypothesis, hypothesis for number five.